Alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh everyone. May peace be upon you wherever you are with your family and friends. Welcome to another online class with Sheikh Muhammad Aslam from Birmingham. Uh, the class on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the perfect creation, written by our renowned scholar Sheikh Muhammad Ali Maliki. Before we start the class, uh, let me once again introduce the Sheikh. Sheikh Muhammad Aslam memorized the Quran from an early age, after which he embarked on the path of seeking sacred knowledge. He ultimately traveled to Damascus, where he undertook extensive private studies as well as enrolling in one of the most prestigious Islamic institutes in the world, Mahat al-Fat al-Islami Seminary, from where he graduated after six years of full-time study with some of the greatest scholars in the world. On returning to the to United Kingdom, he enrolled in postgraduate study at the same time as serving as Imam Khatib at one of the largest mosques in Birmingham. Shah Aslam established the City of Knowledge Academy, which serves as a bustling hub of educational activity, as well as also advising various community and grassroots projects around the city. It is my pleasure to welcome Shah Aslam to start the class. But before that, I would like to inform you, you can send any of your questions pertaining to the class subject today at 9068706. Right? Tafadal Yashi. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My dear brothers and sisters from all around the world and in particular from uh, the blessed land of Singapore, the land of Sayyidina Habib Nuh al-Habshi radiallahu anhu. And uh, I give my dearest uh, greetings and um, regards to all of the Saudi Ilahi team uh, that's uh, directed and backed by Sidi Khalid Ismail and his and his wife. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your endeavors and continue your goodness within your community and uh, allow for your benefit to reach all corners of the earth, insha'Allah. Uh, Barakallahu feekum. Insha'Allah, we'll continue with the work of Sayyid Muhammad bin Alawi al-Maliki al-Makki radiallahu anhu. And in the previous lesson, he spoke about the lineage, the perfect lineage of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And today he's going to move on to speaking about the perfection of his form and his beautiful appearance sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So he said, Imam al-Busiri, Allah rest his soul said, uh, the famous Imam al-Busiri who wrote the, the Burda, uh, the chapter, the Qasidat al-Burda, which is the famous poem that sang uh, all across the world, known as Mawlaya Salli wa Sallim, Da'iman abada ala habibika khayr al-khalqi kullihimi. Imam al-Busiri radiallahu an, in this particular poem, he speaks about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and he describes the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And one of the lines that he says, فَهُوَ الَّذِي تَمَّ مَعْنَاهُ وَصُورَتُهُ ثُمَّ اصْطَفَاهُ حَبِيبًا بَارِئُ النَّسَمِ He speaks about the outer form of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And he says, and it is he, Allah, who completed his surah. Now surah is, uh, in the modern day, if you say, can I take a surah? It means, can I take a picture? So surah is the outer form. Uh, the physical features. Allah indeed completed the outer form and the physical features of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. and his inner meanings and in his uh, and his inner traits and characteristics also. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala chose him as his beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa taala did was perfect him. And after perfecting him, Allah chose him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Qurtubi, the famous uh, scholar, uh, Al-Qurtubi, the famous scholar of uh, tafsir, uh, the Andalusian scholar, he said, uh, he, Allah, did not show all of his beauty to us. For had all his beauty been shown to us, our eyes would not have been able to see him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, the scholars have said that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
his beauty was so intense and so great that had we been shown uh, it in completion in its perfect form our eyes would not have been able to see him so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala veiled away from us most of his beauty and showed us only a portion of it and it was for this reason that his sahaba could sit with him that his family could see him and engage with him sallallahu alaihi wasallam there are countless prophetic hadith and tradition which speak of the perfection of his form and the beauty of his appearance and thus part of the fullness of faith in him is to believe that allah gave him a physical form of which the like had never been seen before him no was ever seen after him on any human being <coughs> so it's part of our iman part of our faith to believe that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the most perfect physical form the likes of which nobody before him was so beautiful and nobody after him was ever of his beauty sallallahu alaihi wasallam and now we'll go through some of those narrations that speak about his physical beauty and why is this important <coughs> the scholars have said it's important to know how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam looked so that every time his blessed name is mentioned and our minds think of him our hearts would be able to sketch his form and our minds would be able to envisage his his portrait and his person sallallahu alaihi wasallam such that every time he's mentioned it's as if our minds are seeing him and our hearts are capturing him for example sidi khalid alhamdulillah i've met him many times i've seen him so many times so every time his name is mentioned automatically my brain knows uh my brain is able to put a face to the name likewise with the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are we able to put a face to the blessed name sallallahu alaihi wasallam or is it that every time we say that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or his blessed name our minds are just blank and they don't engage so so to make our minds engage with his person and interact with him it's very important that we get to know how he looked sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we find that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself when he returned from uh, miraj the journey of uh, the night journey of isra and miraj and he spoke to his companions what did he do <clears throat> he sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them how musa alaihi salam looks he said amma musa fa ka'annahu rajulun min shanu'a as for musa he it was as if he was from the people of shanu'a and shanu'a is a particular tribe of arabs from yemen and so the sahaba knew the physical features of that particular tribe the sahaba knew the physical features of that particular tribe so every time they thought of musa alaihi salam now they could put some features put uh, some description to the name and then he said amma isa as for sayyidina isa alaihi salam and the closest person that i have seen to him is uqba ibn mas'ud uh, uh, Thaqafi radiyallahu an one of the companions of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was from at-taif and um the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent him back to invite the people to taif to islam but then his own people had killed him and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was very upset the prophet said the closest person that i've seen that resembles isa alaihi salam is this companion and then he spoke about ibrahim alaihi salam and he said amma ibrahim فانا اشبه ولده به as for ibrahim alayhi salam i am the most resemblant of his children unto him so if you know want to know how ibrahim alayhi salam looked then just look at me for i am the most resembling of his children unto him and the arabs have said wa man yushabih abahu fama zalam and the one who resembles his father has done no injustice and nothing wrong so from this hadith we learn that it is from the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to describe to others the the physical form of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he described other prophets to them so for them to engage with him and see his physical features and report them they took this as his sunnah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also told us ma ba'ath allah nabiyyan illa hasuna alwajhi hasuna as-sawt he said allah never sent a messenger except that he had a beautiful face 
and he had a beautiful voice. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَإِنَّ نَبِيَّكُمْ لَحَسُنَ الْوَجْهِ حَسُنَ الصَّوْتِ And indeed, your prophet, your messenger has a beautiful face and has a beautiful voice. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what was the reason behind this? The scholars have said the reason behind this was so that people could be attracted towards the prophets and messengers either by listening to them and their message or even by seeing them. This is why when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to Medina al Munawwara, one of his companions, Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Salam, he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, O Messenger of Allah, if you are not given any other signs, any other miracles, any other verses, to uh, to to show the, the the truthfulness of your message, then your physical appearance would have been enough to tell us that indeed you are the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then he said his blessed face, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had the most handsome of faces, as though the sun was was shining in it. Sayyiduna Ali radiyallahu an said he was neither corpulent nor round faced. There was a slight roundness to his face. Now, uh, one companion was asked about the face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the person said, was his face like the sword or was it like the moon? What does this mean? Was it like the sword or was it like the moon? The scholars have said, that the person was trying to ask, was the Prophet's face long like the sword or was it round like the moon? And the companion replied and said, rather it was like the moon. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his blessed face wasn't absolutely round, but it had a roundness to it rather than a longness. And of course, we know that uh, round faces are, or the faces that have roundness in them, they are more cheerful faces. When somebody is upset, uh, we say, why have you got a long face? Why the long face? Meaning... Why is your face so upset and so depressed? Whereas the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had a round, natural roundness in his face, which indicates that he always had a, um, he always had a happy disposition and a cheerful nature. Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha said, when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was pleased, the features of his face would light up as though it was a piece of the moon. So when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was was happy and when he would be pleased, uh, not only he would have a smile on his face, but all of the other features of his blessed face would light up as if they were a part of the moon. What does that mean, a part of the moon? Now here we have to remember something very important, and that is that the scholars have said, whenever the Sahaba radiallahu anhum would describe the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they would compare him let's say to the sun or to the moon. This is a partial comparison and it is not a total comparison. What does it mean that it's a partial comparison? It means that they are comparing uh, the way the moon uh, brightens up the sky in the mists of the dark sky. This is how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's blessed face would light up people's lives and light up people's um, uh, emotions uh, in times of darkness, number one. Number two, the scholars have said there is literally nothing that can be compared or there is literally nothing to which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can be compared to because he was very unique in his person. So all of these comparisons are comparisons with matters that the Sahaba deemed to be Great creations from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the greatest creation in our minds is the sun, is the moon. So the Sahaba would compare a partial comparison with them to make others realize and understand how great, how beautiful, how radiant the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. Both Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an and Ka'b ibn Malik said, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's face was like the circle of the moon, i.e. not completely circular, but it had a roundness to it. Abu Tufail was asked to describe the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, he was white and handsome of face. When he was pleased, it was as though 
his face were a mirror with the moon reflected in it. Now here, a very important point is, uh, he was described, he was white. Now the scholars have said, we, we can say that his skin color was fair. Now this whiteness and this fairness of his noble skin wasn't a Caucasian whiteness. So if we say, I met a white person, generally speaking, we think about European people who are Caucasian in their skin color. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not like this. Rather, he was of a fair complexion uh, uh, in, in line with the skin colors of the Arabs of Makkah al -Mukarrama. So he wasn't dark in his complexion. Uh, rather, he was fair in his complexion, sallallahu alayhi wa And the scholars have said that his blessed skin that was exposed to the sun, i.e. his blessed hands, his face, his blessed feet, they would be slightly tanned. Whereas those parts of his body that were clothed and they were covered with his garment, they were even more brighter than the exposed skin because they wouldn't have been tanned by the heat of the sun. And his blessed face was, uh, was, was, would shine so much that it was as if his noble face was like a mirror. And there was one companion who the Prophet wasallam prayed for his face. And the Sahaba said that his face actually became like a mirror. So if we wanted to see ourselves, we would look at him and we see our reflections in him. Jabir radiallahu anh said his face sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was like the sun and the moon and it was round. I like the sun and moon in radiance uh, and round. All the companions who described the messenger of Allah agreed that his face was bright and filled with light which shone with resplendence and brilliance. Al-Hasan ibn Ali, the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reported that his uh, uncle Hind ibn Abi Hala said the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had great and stately attributes and was honored as such by others. His face shone like the light of the full moon. When is the full moon? So in the middle of the uh, lunar calendar, on the 14th of the lunar calendar, the moon is in its full. It's, it's a moonlit uh, we, we say when, when the moon is full, we call that night the moonlit night. <coughs> And the Sahaba would say that his blessed face was like the full moon in radiance, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in giving light and nur. And there's another comparison here, and that is that people are in times of darkness, people are in times of confusion, people are in times of uh, need. And in dark states like that, it would be the noble face of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that would brighten up their hearts the way the full moon brightens up the entire sky. Jabir ibn Samura looked upon him one moonlit night and said of it later, I began to look from him to the moon and to me he was more beautiful than the moon. So Jabir ibn Samura radiallahu anh said, one night I saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it was the full moon. I looked towards the full moon and then I looked towards the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, indeed the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was more beautiful than the full moon. Rubayy uh, bint Mu'awwidh uh, was asked to describe the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she said had you seen him you would have seen the sun rising i.e. if you had seen the blessed face of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it, you would have seen the sun rising what does that mean? Uh, when the sun rises uh, it rids all of the darkness of the night and it brings about shine it brings about heat it brings about hope it brings about light it brings about energy, all of that in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Umm Ma'bad described him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam thus, I saw a man of visible radiance, his appearance beautiful, his face bright, handsome and fair he was. Who was Umm Ma'bad? So when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was migrating from Makkah al to Madinatul Munawwara, <coughs> 
uh, he stopped by the tent of an old lady <clears throat> whose name was Umm Ma'bad. And he asked her, uh, do you have any uh, food or drink or milk that we can take from? And she said, we don't have anything. My husband has taken out the goats and the sheep um, to let them graze. But there's a drought. And the Prophet said, what about this one? There was a sheep or a goat that was left behind. And she said, this one is, is so weak that it wasn't even able to stand up and go to graze. The Prophet ﷺ said, would you allow me to milk it? And she said, you can try, but... And the Prophet ﷺ went over to it. He touched its udders and said, Bismillah, and milk began to flow and gush. Uh, she, she gave one uh, container after another and they were all filled. The Prophet ﷺ drank from the milk. Sayyidina Abu Bakr drank from the milk. Their guide drank from the milk. And enough milk was left behind for Umm Ma'bad. When her husband Abu Ma'bad returned, he saw so much milk in the house. She said, where did you get this from? In the tent. And she described the Prophet ﷺ and said, a beautiful radiant man came and he milked our sheep. Uh, and this is the milk from that. And he said, indeed, that must be the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm going to follow his trail and I'm going to accept Islam. He went and he found the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi in Medina and he accepted Islam. The scholars have said Abu Ma'bad accepted Islam after hearing the description of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi Wasallam. This is why it's very important for us in the world that we live in, that we describe the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we speak about him <coughs> to the world out there. People on social media uh, are waiting for some hope, are looking for some guidance, are, uh, are wanting some light in, in these dark times. And the best of guidance and the purest of lights that we can provide for them is to speak about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what I said in Malaysia some years ago uh, in a Juma Khutbah, I said that if all of the Muslims of the world flooded social media with speaking about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the world would be a much better place. The world will understand and appreciate who the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. But it's so unfortunate that we as Muslims, we are too so obsessed with ourselves and too concerned about ourselves and what we eat and the selfies that we take and the restaurants that we go to, that we forget that we should be introducing the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam onto the worlds. A woman of Hamdan who, who performed the pilgrimage alongside the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked to compare him to something. She said, like the moon when it is full, I saw neither before nor after him anyone like him, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So that was his blessed uh, face. Then the shaykh moves on to saying his cheek. As for his blessed cheek, it was perfectly smooth and long without being high at its ball. So the blessed cheek of the Prophet sallallahu was smooth and it was long. And this area here, where we have this pointy bone, uh, this is called the ball, uh, without being high at its ball. Now, this part is the ball. Now, some people, uh, especially elderly people, when they become weak and they lose, uh, they don't have much um, flesh on their faces, uh, this area or this bone is protruding. It stands out. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu his blessed cheek was smooth and long. His eyes, as for his noble sight, his Lord described it by saying, The sight wavered not, nor did it stray. It is affirmed by authentic narrations that the Messenger of Allah could see as well by dark night as he could by <clears throat> the bright day. Now, the first verse that the Shaykh cited is in Surah Al Najm. Allah said, Ma zagh al basar wa ma tagha. The sight wavered not, nor did it stray. What does that mean? That when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw Allah subhanahu wa taala, his sight didn't waver. It it didn't go this way or that way. Nor did it go stray. Nor did it go beyond uh, or divert. I.e., it was fixated upon 
seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the sight of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran. And this is another <coughs> evidence of studying the Shama'il is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the body parts of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran al kareem which indicates to us it's not only his message that was important, but also the messenger is of high importance and regard because he is also described in the Quran al kareem and this is something very important that we need to know and understand and appreciate that a lot of people in our time, they say, understand his message, uh, speak about the guidance he came. Why are you fixated upon his person? The reason we're fixated upon his person is because that's what Allah is instructing us to do. If Allah tells us about his sight, what does this mean to us? This means that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his noble body, his presence, his person, his personality, his features, his characteristics, his traits are all of importance. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his blessed sight was so strong and so great that he could see at night in the exact way that he could see during the day. Now, the nights of the people of Makkah and Medina are not like our nights. When even though it's 12 at midnight, it still seems like it's daylight because we've got artificial lights. We've got lamps, we've got torches, etc. The streets are still lit, lit up by lamps, by headlights, etc. When it when night would fall in Medina or in Makkah, and even in the countrysides, in a lot of places still to this day, where there isn't artificial light, when the night falls, that's it. It's pitch black. Nobody can see their way. Nobody, people can't see anything. But the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the depths of the dark night, he didn't need a torch. He didn't need artificial light. His blessed sight, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was so powerful and so piercing and filled with so much light that he was able to see during the night just the way he was able to see during daylight. And he could see what was behind him as well as he could see what was in front of him. So... We can only see ahead of us. We can't see behind us. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he would finish and complete his prayer, his salah, he would turn around to his companions and he would say to them, I know exactly how you are praying, for I could see, I, for I can see from behind me just the way I see ahead of me. And this was a known miracle of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The hadith of Ibn Abi Hala states when he looked at something he would turn to it with his whole body he would never he, he would lower his gaze and he would spend more time looking at the ground than he did at the sky he would usually look at things casually without staring that is he would glance at things from the corner of his eye nearest to his temple nearest to the temple so uh, from the description of the sight of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that he would always keep his blessed sight lowered, his noble gaze lowered. And he would look towards the earth much more than he would look towards the sky. When would he look towards the sky? He would look towards the sky when he wanted to intensify his dua. He would look towards the sky when he wanted the revelation of a particular message to come from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Otherwise, he would keep his noble gaze lowered. And when he wanted to see something, he would look at it from the corner of his eye. He would look at it from the corner of his eye to indicate that he was looking at something casually and he would move on. He wouldn't fixate his eyes upon anything of this dunya. If he needed to see something, he would look at it uh, from the corner of his eye and move on. Also, if somebody spoke to him or called him, he would turn to them with his blessed face and his noble gaze all in all. He wouldn't turn like this, but rather he would turn his entire body towards them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so he can give them the focus and concentration of his sight. Because the sight, uh, الكلام, the eye is what captures a person's speech and a person's emotions within that speech. So it's important that when we speak to somebody that we engage them fully. And we find in our time, unfortunately, that people are so busy 
that they might be on a phone call or they might be texting and at the same time they're speaking to somebody else but they've got their phone in their hand uh, we should try to refrain from this and engage people uh, in a more full manner our master ali radiallahu an said his eyes were large his eyelashes full uh, there was a certain redness to his eyes so his blessed eyes uh, some of the scholars have described it as the two eyelids the lower eyelid and the upper eyelid the distance between them was great which means his noble eyes sallallahu alaihi wasallam were, were large of course in proportion to the rest of his body and his eyelashes were long and this is an indication of beauty uh, this is an indication of beauty and within the a white area within the white area of his eye there was a slight redness that was there at all times and that redness brings about even more beauty in the eye another narration says his eyes were dark black i.e the pupil of his eye was dark black and another uh, uh, and another has it reddish eyes i.e the white area had a redness to it this means a slight redness in the whites of the eyes which is attractive and desirable as opposed to shahla which means a redness in the pupil of the eye so the pupil of the eye of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was black whereas uh, the whiteness of his blessed eye had a slight redness in it and this indicates further beauty of the noble eyes of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his blessed head and brow as for his blessed eyebrow it was broad and full this is what ali radiyallahu an meant by describing it as smooth and in another narration wide or in another narration large they all mean essentially the same thing okay okay so the eyebrows of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were full thin long and they were um, uh, the shape of a bow so the shape of a bow they had a roundness to them they were long uh, full as in full of hair and they were thin not uh, thick and they were long and there was like uh, described like a bow and in between there's a difference of opinion some scholars said that the eyebrows of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam were connected in between others said they weren't connected so how do we reconcile between the two the scholars who said that his eyebrows were connected in between they said uh, that somebody who saw the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from close would notice that they are connected because the hair that were were in between the eyebrows they were very thin and faint in their color they weren't thick like the rest whereas those who saw him from a distance would see would not notice those blessed very thin faint light hairs in between his blessed head was large which is what ali radiyallahu an meant when he described him as having an ample head So the blessed head of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was described to be large now what we have to remember is uh, the joints of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were described to be large uh, the the ends of his noble bones were described to be large and his blessed head was described to be large and the scholars have said concerning this that all of this largeness was in proportion to his body none of it looked odd in him sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is number 1 Number 2 why was it so striking that the sahaba described his blessed head as large because when you converse with somebody when you speak with somebody you speak to them by looking towards their face towards their head and the presence of the noble head and face of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was so great and majestic that people felt that his blessed head was large his noble nose he his nose was curved meaning that its top that its top was high its middle curved 
and its lower part wide and that the middle of the shaft curved outward and the nostrils were narrow so the prophet muhammad sallallahu his noble nose was thin and it was curved at the top and in other narrations we find that there was always a light that was present on top of his blessed nose that the sahaba radiallahu anhum could see his blessed mouth his mouth was wide and the arabs praised wide, wide mouths and disliked small ones his teeth were uh, well spaced and his breath was fresh and his incisors twinkled so the mouth of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was wide and the scholars have said this is an indication of the eloquence of his tongue the eloquence of his tongue and his blessed teeth they were white and bright and always pure and clean and between his upper two teeth there was a space and sayyidina abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu said whenever he would speak it would be as if a light was exiting from between his blessed teeth sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his teeth were well spaced his breath was always fresh sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is why he disliked to eat uh, onion and garlic why he said because i engage with the angels and these are smells of uh, uh, raw onion and raw garlic that the angels dislike so he sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, disliked to uh, eat raw onion and raw garlic sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to always keep his blessed mouth uh, fresh uh, the sahab uh, sayyida aisha radiyallahu anha said whenever the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would enter into his home he would always brush his teeth he would always make miswak sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he instructed people to do the same and he said laula an ashqa ala ummati la amartuhum bis siwak inda kulli salah he said if i didn't deem it to be difficult upon my ummah i would have instructed them to make the miswak and brush their teeth with every single salah that they perform yes so uh, and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said as siwak matharatun lil fam mardatun lir rab the cleansing of the mouth with the tooth stick or the toothbrush is a purification of the mouth and it brings pleasure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why because when we then when we stand before Allah we stand without any bits of food in between our teeth uh, and and stuck in different places and this the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes it for his servant to stand before him whilst he has bits of food stuck in his mouth Okay, shall we stop there, inshallah? Because then the Sheikh moves over to the next chapter of prophetic beauty, inshallah. So now we can perhaps take uh, questions from people, inshallah. Over to you, Sidi Khalid. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. Wa salam, rahmatullah. Inshallah, thank you for the uh, beautiful lesson, blessed one, uh, learning about the Prophet. Uh, the way how we describe it, mashallah, so beautiful. I have so many questions coming in, even from a non-Muslim watching this. And, uh, mashallah. Yeah, uh, she's a Singaporean, but she's a non-Muslim. And he has mm. one question. Later on, I will ask. Uh, I will ask okay. his behalf. Uh, she, the first question is based on the description of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you had described from the book of She Muhammad Ali Maliki. And, the, the physical aspect of him and all that, are we allowed to draw his images based from the description? Okay, so a good question. Uh, the scholars have said we are allowed to draw and have a portrait of his image in our minds and not physical drawings. The scholars have said it's not allowed for Muslims, even though we have a very detailed description of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but we're not allowed to draw. What's the reason behind that? The reason behind that is every artist will draw a different picture, even if it's of the same. Let's say if we give one scene to an artist and say, "Can you draw this, please?" and then we have a number of artists drawing the same scene, we will find some discrepancies in between. So, however much we know of his description, we will not be able to do justice in drawing him. So we should leave that uh, to our minds 
and our imaginations rather than bring it out on paper for we do for we don't want to do injustice to him sallallahu alaihi wasallam thank you chef for that explanation it's very important for us to understand that also. yes Because I think people were mesmerized the way how you describe the Prophet So I think the longing was there to like, how does the Prophet look like? I know how they see. So Alhamdulillah, thanks for your explanation. Okay, another question is uh, in regards to Prophet Yusuf. We always hear this question. Uh, it was said that Prophet Yusuf was good looking, handsome man. Uh, what's the difference then? The beauty of the Prophet Yusuf and our own Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, so that's a good question. So the scholars have said that the beauty of the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam was a sweet beauty. His beauty was sweet. Whereas the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's beauty was um, like a savory. So what's the difference? So when we eat, the main meal that we eat is always going to be a savory. It's not going to be a sweet dish. The sweet dish is always at the end and we try to limit our sweet so we don't have a sugar rush and end up in diabetes. Right. So Yusuf Ali Salam's beauty was very striking and very sweet, such that the women of Egypt cut their hands whilst they saw him. Whereas the beauty of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was so mesmerizing and so cool and calm that people could look towards him all day long and still not be satiated of looking at him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is one. And number two, the scholars have said the beauty of Yusuf alayhi salam put the women of Egypt into fitna in that they cut their fingers and they cut their hands. They were put into tribulation. Whereas the beauty of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, was even though it was so great, yet it never ever put anybody into any fitna, into any tribulation. None of the men of Makkah or Medina or even the women who are around They, when they looked towards the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his mu- beauty was enwrapped in a majesty and in an awe which made people humble and made people uh, amazed, rather than made them, uh, rather than putting them into tribulation. Well, uh, Inshallah, thank you, Shaykh, for the explanation. One of so many things we learned today. Uh, how does the Prophet? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam balance compassion with firmness. Uh, sorry, repeat that again. How does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam balance, balance the compassion with firmness? Firm. Okay. So, uh, how does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam balance between compassion and firmness? Yes. What we have to understand is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sent the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As a mercy to all of the worlds, so everything that he did was filled with mercy. So, for example, we say that our parents are merciful towards us, but at the same time, we know that sometimes they're very firm with us, they're very strict with us. But within that strictness, what do we feel? Do we feel that they are oppressing us or they are having mercy out upon us? Indeed, we feel that they are having mercy upon us, but in a different manner. Likewise, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he was firm with people. People could feel that he's not oppressing us, he's not wronging us, but rather his firmness is filled with mercy for us. Thank you, Sheikh. Uh, next question, Sheikh, is you mentioned about Imam Busairi composing Burda and uh, describing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is it fine for us to write poetry in praising of the Prophet? I'm so touched as how you describe the prophet from this blessed book. Okay, uh, so whenever I've I've travelled all around the world in different places and even in Singapore, and I teach about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I always tell the people to write poetry about him. And one of the places I went, I think Norway once, I went there and I was given a lecture at the university. I said, in the world we have one hidden love. That is concealed in the hearts of the Muslims of the modern day, and they are not bringing this love story out that they have between them and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So everybody who is watching this lesson, including Sidi Khalid Ajma'in and all of the Saud Ilahi team, by next lesson you have a homework, and that is, I want you to compose <laughs> poetry in speaking about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, speaking about your emotions towards him, your love for him, 
uh, speaking about his blessed seerah, whatever you know about him and describing him, whether that's in English or it's in Malay. And I'm sure when I came to Malaysia, uh, into, to Singapore and also to Malaysia, there were many poems that many people wrote, some were in Malay and some were in English. So please, please put pen to paper and let the ink of love flow so that the world can hear. And, you know, um, when, when, when in Denmark the, the cartoons were made, the scholars in Mauritania, in, Mor in, in, Mauritania in, in, in Africa, what did they do? How did they protest? And more poetry about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu They were asked about this. They said, the more we speak about him, the more he is introduced onto the world and the less people will speak against him. So it's very important that we uh, express our love. And you know, we have the Qasida Burda and we have so many other Qasaid like Sheikh Ibrahim Banyas radiallahu anhu. He has so many Qasaid in speaking about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? He wanted this uh, ocean of love to be shared with all of the people of the world. Now, why are we being so miserly? Why are we being so stingy? Are we going to take all this love with us into our graves and not leave it for the people of the earth? No. Our ancestors, the legacy that we pick up from the Sahaba all the way to our time is that the Muslims always express their love, whether in poetry or in prose. Whatever way, form or shape they could, they, they express their love for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So it shouldn't be hidden away. Like Imam al-Busiri said at the beginning of the Burda, he said, you can't hide this love because your tears are flowing from your eyes and telling me you are a lover. Your body is ailing and becoming ill and it tells me you are a lover. Allah. Well, Allah. Uh, okay. And you know the love the story of the Muslims with the Prophet وسلم, is very different to normal love stories. In normal love stories, lovers are jealous. They don't want anybody else to know of their beloved. But you know the love of the Prophet وسلم, every lover of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, wants yeah. everybody else to also fall in love with him. Oh. Thank you, Shay, for that. Next week we have homework. <laughs> Yeah. So, Shay, next question is uh, about Sayyidina Rasulullah death. Uh, I, I paraf uh, paraphrase two questions into one because both asking the same thing. He said, uh, this person said, did Rasulullah experience Sakaratu Maut? Uh, as I've read differences in opinion regarding this, how could he experience so much pain of a thousand step? Step, that means step as some narration would say, when he was the most beloved. And I continue another one. He said, what was uh, the people of Medina at that period of time when the Prophet left this one? So he said two in one. Okay, so it's a very important question. I'm going to perhaps answer the first one. Uh, so we saw uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did experience Sakaratul Maut. Sakaratul Maut is the difficulties of death. Now, how those difficulties of death were upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how he experienced them, we don't know because the experiences of the Prophets are indeed different to the experiences of normal people. That's number one. Number two, why did he experience Sakaratul Maut when he was the most beloved of Allah's creation? Then the question comes back is that there were so many other difficulties and hardships Throughout his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he experienced, yet he was the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the sunnah, this is the way that Allah azza wa jal operates in his creation. Allah sends difficulties upon the greatest of people. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, uh, nasi bala'an ala anbiya, summa al -amsal fal -amsal. The people who are struck with the biggest tribulations and the most hard times are the Prophets. And then the people who are the closest to them and then the people who are the closest to them. So these are tests which are sent upon the prophets and messengers. And by means of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates their ranks and raises their stations. And number, uh, the second part of the question is, how did the people of Medina feel? Sayyiduna Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anh said, the day that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered into Medina, aba'a kullu shay, everything in Medina lit up. And the day that he left, it was as if everything switched off in Medina. 
Inshallah, we, as we carry on uh, passing through yeah. the chapters, we'll cover a lot of these uh, topics also. Yeah. No worries. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. Beautiful. Uh, another one that people always uh, often ask is, uh, can we dream of the Prophet? And we know there's a hadith that the Prophet mentioned, that whoever see me is him in the dream. So I verify a few questions in saying that, how do we able, or how are we able to dream of the Prophet? So good question. So that same question was asked to a great scholar by one of his students. And a scholar said to his student, tonight when you go home and you have your supper, I want you to add lots more salt to your food. He said, okay, I'll do that. He said, but the condition is after adding lots more salt to your food, I don't want you to drink any water, even though you are so thirsty. He said, fine. So he went home and he told his wife, he said, where's the food? Food came, he put more salt. She said, what are you doing? He said, don't worry. And then he said, ah, you want some water? She said, hey, I have some water. He said, no, I can't drink any water. So then she told, he told her why. And then he went to sleep. He woke up the next day and he went to the sheikh and the scholar said, what did you see? He said, I saw water. I saw rivers. I saw wilds. I saw rain. I saw so much water. The sheikh said, do you know why you saw so much water? Because you were thirsty when you slept and you saw water. When you become thirsty like this, to see the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you will see him. So whoever we speak about during the day, whatever, whoever we connect on during the day and our emotions during the day, they, that's what is repeated to us in the evening. Inshallah. Thank you, Sheikh. Uh, the next question, Sheikh. We hear many times how each Sahaba who were with our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would feel as if they are the most special to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What can we learn in how to deal with people from this example of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So, yes, that's an important question. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to give his full concentration to all of his Sahaba, regardless of their past. And what we learn from this is we shouldn't belittle people. We, do, we shouldn't uh, think less of people. We should give people their full human dignity, regardless of what their past was, regardless of what we know of them. We should give them the utmost respect and honor. And we shouldn't keep in our mind their wrongs, their faults, because we are all people of wrong. We all make mistakes. We all... Uh, fall into sin, etc. So when we engage with people, we should not engage with them such that we are reminding them of their past, but rather we should engage with them with that in that moment. We should be with them in that moment, not before and after. So the Prophet ﷺ used to engage people in the moment that he was with them, regardless of what happened before, or what is going to happen in the future. And this will make us more courteous and kind towards people. Okay, thank you very much, inshallah. It's a very important to know this. Uh, this is the last question, Sheikh. Uh, this is from a non-Muslim brother. Uh, he's been uh, following uh, your class since last week, a Singaporean. Uh, he was asking, uh, after two sessions uh, attending your class online, uh, he really have the urge for the Prophet despite that he's not a Muslim and he's trying to find the certainty in being uh, walking with the Prophet and uh, he say, he's saying like what's your advice for him? Uh, my advice to him uh, our dear Singaporean brother is connect on to Saud Ilahi and Sidi Khalid Ajma'een and uh, the volunteers and this group of people who I've visited for nearly four to five years, nearly every single year I've been visiting, and the network that they have, the dedication that they have, the commitment that they have, uh, the, the, the love for service that they have to not only Muslims, but non-Muslims and the wider community, that will give you a real feeling of what it means for people to be lovers of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for people to be connected and be part of his great religion, uh, all I can say to you is connect with Sidi Khalid 
and be a part of Saut Ilahi, even if you're not a Muslim, you know, they will take you on as you are. Because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us of unconditional love. Whatever baggage a person has, that's their business. From our side, we will give people unconditional love. And indeed, without a doubt, and I say this, and I make Allah my witness that I have seen this in Saut Ilahi and in Sidi Khalid, that they have unconditional love for people, regardless of their background, regardless of what they have come with, they provide, Saut Ilahi provides them with love, with comfort, with confidence, with certitude, with belief, with, with faith, with, with goodness, with a vision, with, uh, with a straight path, uh, and with guidance. So, uh, my dear uh, Singaporean brother, uh, do connect on to these people. I know now we're on a lock, uh, under a lockdown, but I'm sure uh, Sidi Khalid and Sidi uh, Sufyan and uh, Sidi Muhammad Amin and Sidi Ashik and all of the other volunteers and the core members and the backbones of this organization will uh, link you up, whether it's on Facebook or on WhatsApp or whatever other social media means they are. And you will find a vibe of goodness from them that will connect you onto the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that he increases his urge that you have for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that he connects you to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon you, upon him, such that you have a direct invitation from the Prophet Muhammad to enter into his religion, inshaAllah. Amen, amen. Uh, with this, we end our q &A here. Thank you very much for your knowledge, advice and wisdom. Uh, MashaAllah, what, what a way, to, oh, what a blessed day to learn about the Prophet on his blessed month, Shaban, and uh, may Allah make us reach Ramadan. So, Shay, before mm -hmm. we end this session, and we meet you again next week, uh, we, can you end the dua for today's class? InshaAllah, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Oh Allah, we ask you that you accept this lesson. Oh Allah, we ask you that you give us a great understanding of the Prophet Muhammad. Allow us to follow his characteristics, his traits, mm -hmm. his noble ways, his religion. Follow the revelation that you sent to him, the Quran. Oh Allah, make us people of piety and righteousness. Make us people of goodness and make us people of good character. Make us good people who are in the company of the good wherever we are, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, we ask you for the goodness of this world and the next. We seek refuge in you from the evils of this world and the next. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa rahmatika ya rahman wa rahimin. Thank you very much, Ya Aslam. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Remember, see you in the dua. Yeah, may Allah preserve you. Inshallah, see you next week. Inshallah. May we share the blessing. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, so, Alhamdulillah, everyone. Thank you for tuning in in today's uh, lesson online with Shah Aslam. Uh, we are looking for sponsorship if you like to sponsor our online uh, programs. Uh, we are looking for it at any amount. So PM us or message us for more information. May Allah bless you on this blessed month and blessed night. See you again on this Saturday with Shidi Talud on the path to Allah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.